So I didn't really give it a thought. I just, and I think that this is uh, mostly important that we don't think about it. We just, it's part of, uh, you know, it's part of my life. So yeah, of course. There, there's not like uh, some great idea I'm, I'm going to put it in the movie. It's already there. And this is, and uh, I think that this is the best way of uh, making movies that have LGBTQI uh, characters or teams. Hello, welcome and pleasantries. Uh, my name is Bartolomeo Samut and I am the program manager and part of the selection committee for Panorama. And today I am very happy to be speaking with Melitza Tomovic, the director of this year's official Berlinale selection, Kalti. <laughs> hey, hello. Hello. It's so good to meet you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Thank you so much Thanks. for making this film. Uh, I'm a huge fan. And uh, let's uh, jump in. Uh, firstly, in two or three sentences, what would you say your film is about? Okay, uh, I think the film is about uh, families, uh, the different kind of families, the one we, we have like that are blood related, but also the families we shape with our friends. And um, I guess it's also about uh, loneliness, uh, how like with a bunch of people, or relatives or families, you can you can feel alone, and uh, it's about growing up also. And it, I think this is about this is the film that it's about. Yeah. Dobro. Koliko je 45 puta 5? To je 225. Just. Ajde sad ja tebe malo. Koliko je 67000 puta 8? 67000 puta 8. Mm. Milion Where or when did you initially come up with the idea for this film? I don't, I don't actually know. I think, uh, I think it just uh, came to me. I know I wanted to make an ensemble cast movie. And then I started to, uh, to think uh, how they could gather. And then the birthday party is always a good setting particularly the one I had when I was eight. So for me, this was like the beginning idea. Wow. Yeah. And so also then getting a feature length film made can be quite a, a long journey. Can you talk us through this process and how it was for you? Well, for the, this uh, particular uh, film, uh, th this first one uh, was kind of quickly because the idea was there for a long time, for I think 2016, but I didn't write anything. I was uh, just taking notes. So uh, when I started to write the script, it it went really quickly. Like I, I wrote it in a, a two months period and then we, we were just shaping it up to be good for our film fund. And then we immediately got funded. So in 2019 we were already filming it which was great i didn't want to wait for like to get more money from other funds or anything because i knew we were i was a debutant and nobody's gonna give money into debutant movies i think and i was ready to shoot so i was like let's shoot i know this film i can feel it so let's do it now and then the the process that uh, was like that lasted the longest was editing. So we had like 50 versions of the film and my editor and my very good friend, Yelena Maksimovic, uh, she like gave everything. So we tried so many things. And then because it was the rhythm, there is so many stories. And when somebody's uh, like too much uh, 
dominant, uh, you kind of lose track of other stories. And it was very like puzzle, you know, if you take one, it, everything collapses. And it was, it was a hard, but it was also interesting because we love each other and we li like to work with each other. So it was fun, but it lasted a year. So we finished it um, uh, mid uh, 2020. Wow. Wow. When, just... when, uh, when Corona came, it was the best time ever because we could have worked without other jobs. So it was really good. I mean... <laughs> um, <laughs> then I guess then my next question would be when you're talking about the editing process, uh, your film opens with Mother Mariana in one of maybe the boldest scenes to open a film with. So why was this scene then for you the scene to open the film? Uh, if I'm sincere, so this particular uh, image uh, was the first image I had in my mind when I thought about this film. So I knew this is how it's going to begin. So I knew the beginning from before I started to work on the script. So and the, the other thing that I knew is that uh, father, the, the husband, will stumble into this situation and he would want to get out of it. So this is the two things that I knew and this is what I liked. I knew it's, it will be, it is a movie about uh, relationships and it tackles a lot of, uh, I think, things that are hard, but it tackles them in a kind of sense of humorish kind of way. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, it does. Um, and it's also set around, uh, as you were saying, the birthday party of young Minya. And the yep. film mastly switches perspectives from mother to uh, husband to the young boy who's sort of floating between the two uh, different parties and then uh, the young daughter celebrating her birthday. Um, can you talk about why this was important for you to then show the party from all these different perspectives? Well, th this was the way it was written from the beginning. So um, I, I don't know. I just wanted to see how this night affected each character. So I give, you know, how it changed their lives, especially the kids' lives who are in their formative years. And you know that from that night, if something big happened, it's, it's going to change them and form, form them for, for their years to come, you know, like, where are they now? So yeah, <laughs> this was, this was, uh, this was very important to me uh, to, to just find a way that they all have a space in, in a story, but not to over, overcome, you know, I'm not sure if I use the right word, but yeah. Um, there's also the discussion that some of the characters have about being Celts and what this claiming this identity means to them. Could you elaborate a bit on this topic for us? Well, this was, uh, this was the idea that they could have, they, because they couldn't be like uh, in my head and how I written them, uh, they couldn't be uh, Yugoslavian anymore. Uh, and and if, they, if they were like, um, forced to choose to say what nationality they were. They would rather say they were Celts because like to reinvent a new identity that they don't have to ju justify. And this was, this is the, the idea that, that, uh, that was a, like a beginning idea of everything and the whole story actually. Also within this like fantastic cast of characters, because they're all quite amazing, um, you also have great lesbian and gay characters. So how important was it for you to ensure this inclusion and representation in your story? Oh, well, to be honest, I never like uh, thought, oh, I have to make a film and uh, there has to be an, uh, inclusive uh, LGBTQI characters. This is just what came to me as I, uh, as I was writing. And this is just about like uh, <clears throat> uh, couple dynamics. And this, these were the couples that I know and they were gay and, and, I, and they were hilarious and 
and pain, pain in the asses, of course. And then I was like, yeah, this is, this is coming in. This is, this is great. So I didn't really give it a thought. I just, and I think that this is uh, mostly important that we don't think about it. We just, it's part of, uh, you know, it's part of my life. So yeah, of course. There, there's not like uh, some great idea I'm, I'm going to put it in the movie. It's already there. And this is, and uh, I think that this is the best way of uh, making movies that have LGBTQI uh, characters or teams or everything, you know. Yeah, and I really appreciated it, how it was also in there and how these characters were written in there. I really, um, really loved them as well. Um, is there like a big discussion at all for say more LGBTQ plus representation within Serbian films? And was there some kind of subcultural space in Belgrade, say before the war, for like an alternative kind of lifestyle? Yeah, well, uh, the yeah, first question. So we have like this uh, Merlin Film Festival. And it's a great uh, festival. Uh, it's named by a character for, from Želimir Žilik, Marble Ass. And um, so it's a LGBTQI festival. And it, uh, now it's, I don't know how, how many years it's now in Belgrade. But I think that uh, every year they have a couple of short films that comes from uh, our academies that have uh, like LGBTQI characters or te teams. So it's kind of getting bigger. And I think it, it is because of them in, and because of this festival. I think it, it really, really helps. So, yeah, I think that, I think that maybe they, they really made a, made a change. Uh, and regarding uh, places in during the 90s, I read this a uh, lot of things, uh, research I've done for this film, but I read this great book that is called Staklenets uh, from this guy that uses his like um, uh, anonymous uh, name. So he, he would, it's, a, it's an uh, autobiography book. And it's about his cruising from 80s to the end of 90s. And it's, oh, it's awesome. I really loved it. I enjoyed it. So, it, it, and it's great because it also depicts when he was in 20s until he's like um, late 30s. And also, the, and also of course, uh, when AIDS came to Belgrade and everything that happened in the 90s also when, embargo also becomes so it's a really really good book but, but it also talks about uh, clubs that uh, that existed in belgrade and how the society i mean how that society worked and everything it's it was really really good i mean i i kind of would like to was there to experience it uh because it seems uh, really really crazy and uh, yeah yeah and <laughs> free actually free really really free <laughs> um, say a question about going back to that era, um, how was the collaboration working with the other heads of the departments and sort of recreating that feel and the setting and, and the costumes for your characters? Oh, it was great. I worked with uh, Maya Mirkovic, she's a costume designer, and uh, Maria Mitrich, she's a production designer. And they are two best friends, which was great. And they are from Shabac. It's a town in Western Serbia. So, you know, they kind of grew up in the 90s together. And this was the great, the best thing, we, the meetings we had, because it was down there memory lane. So it was always, do you remember this person and this person? She wore this and she, this was, and we were walked, watching like photo albums, you know, from, from each other. And it, this was really, really good. And they put their whole heart in it. And uh, the best thing was that each of them brought something to the house, you know, like, um, object or anything. I, I brought my uh, grandmother's tapestry uh, with, with the horses uh, drinking from, um, I don't know how to say, water. And, and yeah, Maya would bring a lot of her clothes from Shabbat, you know, that she wore in the 90s. So some of our characters wore their sh her shirts that she wore when she was in high school. So it was really, really amazing. Everybody really liked it. And because uh, it's kind of, 90s are, 
kind of cool, you know? I mean, I really like 90s. I kind of dress up 90s still. So it was really a great period. Hey, Titi. Mm. Mi crk... Ma ne, pit. Nisu normalni, majke. Šte? Do pet su me držali. Zašto moje dete ima toliko neopravdanih? Zašto moje dete ima četiri iz biologije? Zašto moje dete ima dva iz fizičkog? Zašto? Zato što sam deca kriminalna, tako sam i rekla. A onda ona Bačevićka, na mama, od one mali što ima keca iz vladanja. E, ona je krenula da ih brani. Kao, ne, 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 nisu deca kriva, sve to zbog Snickersa. Snickersa? Žena je mislila na Skins. Aha. I šta, posle je ceo roditeljski otišao na to da... Utvrdimo od čemu žena bu ulazi. Čekaj, su pitali za mene? Majo. Deca su bila presveća što gube časa. Ovi naši zbornici nisu primetili da te nema. Minjon. Da podeliš sa sestrom. Ona ne voli ovu. E, čekaj samo. Nemoj da se šokiraš, ali zada je došlo sa nekim. We kind of see through your film like a slice of life. Like back in the 90s, just after the collapse of Yugoslavia, a lot of alcohol is consumed, many cigarettes are smoked, uh, blame is sort of thrown around, and an orgasm has been achieved. Um, mm -hmm. When the credits roll um, on your film, what would you like the audience to walk away feeling? I would like them to walk away uh, feeling nostalgic. Um, and I would like them to walk away uh, feeling like in the end, everything is going to be okay. And uh, kind of uh, bittersweet, but in the end, good feeling. This is something that I would really, really like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I sort of got that from uh, the very last shot as well. Very sort of nostalgic and uh, going up from the house to the air was quite beautiful. Yeah. Make a pressure Thank right there. You. Yeah. Um, so then I'll do it. Last easy question then for today. Okay. Um, very simple one. Do you have any new projects in the works that we should be looking out for? I'm currently working on a uh, TV series that is called The Block 27. So I'm working it, I'm a co directing it. Uh, my colleague uh, director is Momir Milosevic, who is known for his horror movies. And this is a horror teenage drama series yeah so i'm tackling a genre of horror and it's very very interesting and uh, i'm very excited we have some great kids and it's gonna be uh, i i think uh, it can be a great result with them we already did the casting and i'm really really excited about it great thank you so much uh, for joining us here it was lovely to meet you and um, yeah, uh, good luck with uh, the new series and uh, with the journey of Kelty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this interview. <laughs> Thanks. <Okay. laughs> Bye.